how to manage difficult people in any situation and what are some of the ways that you can build a positive rapport with someone who is consistently difficult well that's exactly what i want to share with you in this video you see in an organization you will meet many different people who has a stake in what you do these include your boss co-workers partners vendors employees and customers some of these people can be easy to work with while others can be challenging so as a leader how do you manage to get these people to support and commit to your projects and ideas in my opinion i believe that the most effective approach is to first assess their personalities and then adapt your strategies to collaborate effectively with them this involves understanding their communication styles motivations and goals by aligning with their interests which leads to a more productive discussions and mutually beneficial outcomes so today i'm going to share with you an approach which can literally help you to manage all these difficult people in your life and I call it the Ocean Strategy, which is commonly known as the Big Five Personality Traits. And according to research with a coefficient alpha of 0.83, the Big Five Personality Traits approach is one of the most psychometrically robust tools on the market, whereby thousands of organizations, including consulting firms and non-profits around the world, have used it for its precisions and insights. So without further ado, let's jump in to explore the Ocean Strategy. In the ocean strategy, the first letter is O and it stands for openness. When it comes to openness, I'm referring to understanding the individuals. How creative are they? Are they open to new and innovative ideas or are they very conservative in their own thinking? So individuals, they are high in openness. They are normally very creative and open to new experiences and explore new novel ideas it is good to engage them with innovative solutions and encourage their input in brainstorming sessions for people who are low in openness they usually very conservative in their own thinking and also resistant to change they prefer a more routine and predictable stuff to manage them you have to give them clear guidelines structure and factual information instead of radical information next the letter c stand for conscientiousness these are the individuals who value punctuality and love deadlines they pay special attention in detail and discipline to get things done on time if you want to manage them efficiently you have to set clear expectations timelines and provide them with regular updates and for people who are low conscientiousness these are the individuals who are more spontaneous and flexible but less reliable in terms of organizing and planning so to manage them it is good to offer them reminders and check-ins to keep them on track you can also provide them with some flexibility in terms of how the tasks are completed next the letter e stands for extroversion when it comes to extroversion i'm referring to understanding how outspoken sociable and outgoing are the individuals and people who are high extroversion they are often motivated by the social stimuli these are the individuals who often draw energy from being around with others and enjoy social interactions to manage these individuals effectively you may consider engage them in group discussions public forums and provide opportunities for verbal feedback for people who are low extroversion they prefer solitude because they may be overwhelmed by too much social interaction and when you are working with people who are low extroversion you may consider having a one-to-one -one conversation with them or even put it in written communication options this will help to respect their need for personal space next the letter a stands for agreeableness whereby we understand the individuals how adaptable cooperative and compassionate are they and people who are high agreeableness they usually want to avoid any conflicts because they value peace and harmony so to manage these individuals you can foster a collaborative environment acknowledge their perspectives and provide feedback and recognition and for people who have low agreeableness you have to be careful because these are the individuals who are more competitive and less concerned about other people's feelings they tend to be more direct and critical in what they say and to manage these individuals you have to be clear and factual and provide them with evidence-based arguments and prepare for potential conflicts and debate and lastly the letter n stands for neuroticism whereby we understand these individuals how prone are they in terms of managing their stress worry and anxiety like for example are they very reactive and calm when facing these situations and for people who are high in neuroticism this individual may experience emotional instability anxiety and moodiness so to manage them effectively you have to provide a stable and predictable environment 
and offer them with reassurance to avoid unnecessary stresses. Where else for people who are low in neuroticism, these individuals are emotionally resilient and less likely to get upset by stress. And when you are working with people with low neuroticism, you may offer them with constructive feedback and create a low stress working environment for them to clearly communicate their expectations to reduce any anxiety. To sum up, when it comes to managing stakeholders, it is crucial to understand that these traits exist on a spectrum and individuals can exhibit different levels of each trait. Therefore, when you can tailor your approach based on their personality trait, it can help you to build rapport, gain trust, and effectively manage your stakeholders' relationship. And before I want to end this video, I'm going to leave you with one powerful quote by a Roman statement called Marcus Tullius Cicero. And it says, If you wish to persuade me, you must think my thoughts, feel my feelings, and speak my words. Ponder upon that and I'll see you in my next video.